everybody. Um, firstly, thank you so much for having me in this beautiful country. I haven't been to India in many, many years, so it's a, a real privilege to be back. And I'd just like to say thank you to Dr. Batra for creating this incredible platform uh, that we can all attend and learn from. And a special thank you to Priyanshi for organizing all of my travel and my trip. Um, it's been smooth and the hospitality has been just absolutely fantastic. So I am the Vice President of Immersive Technology and Artificial Intelligence at WPP. I am a remote worker. I live two hours outside of Cape Town in South Africa. And um, my work really uh, focuses on our top five markets, being the US, the UK, Germany, China, and of course, India. So um, I get to engage with a lot of teams and a lot of clients in this region, which is a big privilege. Um, and since joining WPP, I haven't been able to visit India yet. So this is a very exciting time for me. Um, my role, I sit within our C CTO team and I engage very closely with our data teams, um, our creative technology teams, and our global strategic partnerships team. And so I get exposure um, to all of our agencies across the globe and, and almost all of our different markets. And the role that we play is really a research and development role to, to uncover new technologies and to create new solutions that we can commercialize and scale so that our clients can benefit from these new cutting edge innovations. I think it's important to firstly say what I'm not going to speak about today. Um, I'm not going to talk about AI in the realms of legal or ethics um, or fear mongering or data privacy. While these are all very, very important issues, we have huge teams that engage around these topics and focus on them. Um, I believe we're living in possibly one of the most exciting times that we've ever experienced as humanity. And so I view all of these advancements through, um, I suppose, a lens of optimism. And I try to speak about things through positive provocation. Um, I feel this is how we get the best outcomes. Now, um, now that you know my perspective from, from which I see things, I think it's very important that we contextualize what I'm seeing in the world um, at this point today. And so, if we look at our inevitable context, going back sort of five to 10 years and looking forward five to 10 years, we're seeing a major shift in that the internet is moving from a 2D web to a 3D web. The second thing we're seeing, which was pointed out in the previous keynote, is that we're seeing the convergence of numerous technologies. Now, whether you call this the fourth industrial revolution or the singularity, um, these technologies are all maturing and it feels like artificial intelligence is actually the final piece in this puzzle. And at the same time, um, we saw that AR and VR or immersive tech is one of the key things that's emerging. We look at this through a lens of something called the reality virtuality continuum. And that continuum is showing us a shift from reality to augmented reality to virtual reality and ultimately to that concept that we call the metaverse. And it's not important how we define that, but we need to understand that this is a bit of a journey that we're going along that particular continuum. For me personally, the most immediate opportunity in this space is augmented reality. And um, I think it's also important that we look back in time as to what has happened so that we can see the trajectory that we've taken to help inform us about where we are right now and where we are going. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about, I suppose, the history of immersive technology and AI. If I were to say to you 10 years ago, imagine a computer that can learn and adapt like a human, but much faster, you probably would have thought I was a little bit crazy. But that's the basic idea behind artificial intelligence. And immersive technology in parallel, including AR and VR, has also evolved and is creating very realistic and interactive digital environments. We're also gonna to touch today on hardware innovations like VR headsets, AR glasses, and the advancements of our smartphones. Software advancements like machine learning, uh, natural language processing, and computer vision, and how these are all coming together and contributing to the rapid growth and adoption of these technologies across every single industry. So let's look at it in a little bit more detail, right? 
because artificial intelligence has come a long way since its early days of rule-based systems in the 1950s. In the 1960s, we saw programs that emerged that could help, well, that could play chess and solve very basic maths problems. And in the 70s, we saw um, the emergence of expert systems. And in the 80s, machine learning, which you've all heard about, um, techniques were introduced, allowing computers to learn from data and improve their performance over time. And in the 90s, we saw the rise of neural networks, trying to mimic the structure and the function of our brains. And of course, in the 2000s, deep learning techniques were developed, allowing AI to tackle very complex tasks using vast amount of data. And today, these technologies are used in almost every industry, like I said, to automate processes, to improve decision making, and to enhance customer experiences. And so, if AI has been prevalent for so long, then why are we seeing such a huge hype in the last 24 months? Well, it's because AI got a user interface. Previously, you had to be a developer to integrate or use these solutions. You had to know how to code. But with the emergence of large language models, now we can simply type and talk to engage with these technologies, unleashing power for everybody. But AI is a very broad and big realm. And there's two specific areas that are driving the current boom. And those are machine learning and generative AI. I like to think of machine learning as a computer program that learns from data without it being explicitly programmed. Um, think of it like teaching a child by showing them lots of examples, right? Here's loads of pictures of a cat. Now you know what a cat looks like. Every evening it gets dark. We know it's going to get dark again this evening because it's happened every single night before. And if we look at generative AI, it's a computer program that can create new content like images and text or music. And um, by using what it has learned, using massive amounts of data, allowing us to write news articles or poems or create original artworks or compose music, a full range of modalities. And we're not stopping there. Because AI is not just about generation or creating things from scratch. It also has the ability to see really well. At first glance, I think most of us would see breakfast here. But when we put this image through ChatGPT, we see actually a very different picture. This is a white cat curled up on a gray bed. And someone's placed an orange in the center of it, making it look like a fried egg. So arguably, if you saw the fried egg too, we can acknowledge that AI might have the ability to see things clearer than we have the ability to. And so think about the implications that this has for people who have disabilities and impaired vision. One thing that we're going to see a lot of is this. This lucky emoji has become the poster child for AI and generative AI, and it's coming to a button near you. In fact, I give it 24 months before we see this symbol on a toothbrush powered by AI. Now, computer AI vision makes one of my favorite things possible, and that's augmented reality. Augmented reality, believe it or not, was conceived in the 1960s, but it was only in the 1990s where the term was actually coined by the US military in their Armstrong Laboratory. And in 2008, we saw our very first augmented reality app, Wikitude. In 2013, you might remember Google Glass, very premature, but gave us a taste of what augmented reality eyewear might look like in the future. And in 2016, I think the most significant moment for augmented reality, the iPhone launched with two cameras, allowing us to triangulate content and stabilize it in reality. And the, pho the phenomenon of Pokemon Go um, spread across the world. In 2021, Snap released their AR spectacles, giving people a true taste of a form factor that people can wear and have hands-free augmented reality. And today, AR is everywhere. It's available on every single digital platform, in native apps, in the smartphone browser, and it's being used across every single industry in the most incredible ways. And so if we look at all of that research and development and decades of advancements, and we look at then how the young generation is using this technology, we get this. But in reality, AR 
is saving lives. This is a campaign created to, uh, to help people learn CPR. Not many people know this, but seven out of 10 cardiac arrests occur in front of bystanders. But less than 20% of people know how to provide first aid in that scenario. This campaign created global awareness and education to help save lives of people who need it most. And it's going to revolutionize different medicine disciplines and people with disabilities. So getting back to interfaces and device, this is a slide that I showed two years ago at Cannes, really looking at the development of hardware as we're moving forward. Currently, we're using our smartphones, and I assure you they're not going anywhere. We have the snap glasses. Companies like Mojo Vision, funded with millions of dollars, are developing contact lenses, and they were able to shrink an LCD screen into a contact lens. And of course, Elon Musk's Neuralink, looking at computer brain interfaces. But in the last two years, things have changed. Snap has not evolved this technology, but Meta have launched their Ray-Ban Meta glasses featuring AI, available globally in Ray-Ban stores. Mojo, sadly, has gone out of business. It's very difficult to put a camera, a screen, computing power, connectivity, and a battery into a contact lens. But someday this will emerge again. And what we have seen being introduced is the advent of spatial computing from Apple, giving us a device that really shows us the true full potential of eyewear. And it's just a matter of time before it shrinks. And Neuralink has advanced in the last two years, getting FDA approval for human testing. And here we can see a short clip of their first patient. Can we play that video? I mean, when I first actually moved the cursor with my mind, it blew my mind for like a whole day. And to be helping, to be able to be useful in some way, it completely changed how I live. Great, so what you see there is the first patient and he's able to control a mouse cursor with his mind as well as play games. And so if we jump into gaming, which includes virtual worlds, they've also received a shot in the arm with AI. In the early days of gaming, players were limited to 2D graphics and very simple gameplay mechanics. And I'm sure many of you are familiar with these digital gaming platforms. Today, gaming and virtual worlds continue to grow and evolve offering players new and exciting ways to not only engage with digital content, but with each other too. Here's an example of a very basic augmented reality game that you play in your smartphone browser. This game uses AI to understand the environment that you're in, and it adapts the gameplay to that environment so that you can play in your own home dynamically. Isn't that just absolutely fantastic? And so artificial intelligence and augmented reality are very interconnected. They rely on each other's technologies to advance. AI can analyze user behavior and preferences to tailor content and interactions. AR uses computer vision and can integrate with natural language processing, two key AI technologies, to recognize and interpret the world around us and overlay information on top of it, providing a platform for AI to deliver engaging interactive experiences. And together, they perpetuate the advancement of each other's technologies, creating new opportunities for us all to innovate. This is the power of convergence. Some work that we were lucky to participate in with Shopify, which I showed last year, um, really encapsulates this convergence as well. And it's one of my favorite video examples to share. Hey, so if I wanted to get into Lotair, like really get into it, what would I need? Here's a few options, depending on how pro you want to go. Uh, you know, like something nice, but not too expensive. Definitely. These are both great choices. This one is smaller and manual, so you will also need to buy a milk steamer. And this one is automatic and has a steam one built in. Yeah, great. Let's go with that. And also like a nice mug. Absolutely. There's this local potter who does gorgeous work. Here's a few color options. Ooh, one of each, please. What does that come to? $6.99.99. Great, ring it up. 
Fingerprint, please. Awesome. Looks like it'll be here on Thursday. Fantastic. So what you're seeing there is a person wearing a MetaQuest VR headset with pass-through. Okay. It's linked into ChatGPT via voice, and it's connected to a Shopify e-commerce store and payment gateway. And that's an actual working demo. And to reiterate what was said in the previous keynote, what we're seeing is that e-commerce stores and online stores that offer a way for consumers to preview a product before buying it or try on a product before buying it are seeing a 70% reduction in returns. For most of you that don't know, e-commerce sites, returns is the biggest killer of new e-commerce sites and it's probably one of the largest expenses of existing e-commerce sites. So perhaps these technologies could support how you engage with your customers during the commerce um, process. But I think it's important that we dive deeper into AI. I think these sort of technological advancements of this magnitude demand our full attention. And I obviously cannot go back home without showing you what's happening in this space, what we're doing, some work that I love, and what's in store for us in the future. So, there are well over 2,000 large language models now available. It's becoming a commodity. In fact, some people are never going to recoup their investments in this space. And in the open source AI landscape, just on GitHub, there are almost a thousand generative AI repositories with at least 500 stars. We will soon see billion dollar one person companies emerging in the world. And of course, the financial stakes have never been higher, right? We've all seen the Nvidia and Meta share prices rocketing. And with all this advancement, it can be very difficult to understand and even harder for marketers to manage. So how do we become leaders in AI? Well, at WPP, we knew that this change was coming, and we've been working really hard for half a decade. We've been building our marketing operating system, WPP Open. We've committed to invest large sums of money into artificial intelligence. We've centralized our data and asset capability within Group M Choreograph. We've been training our people on the applications of AI in business. In fact, some of our teams were responsible for writing the curriculums on AI for business at Oxford University. And we've been deepening our strategic partnerships globally in which we co-invest. But none of this would be possible without vision. I think vision is extremely important because it helps guide us. And what we're seeing is that clients are looking for answers. They're asking, how do we understand this? Can you help us with a plan? How can we implement these technologies? And that's because it is not about just generating text and images. It's an entirely new paradigm for enterprise software development and process automation. So along with a very solid vision framework, we've developed a use case framework, as well as a strategic framework of our own. Talking about reinvention, disruption calls for new commercial and business models. And if we're wanting to accelerate, we need to embed AI in our products and services like WPP Open and offer that to our clients. And from a productivity perspective, AI needs to be embedded in our core back office tools, all of our tools, things like Copilot on our Microsoft solutions. And if we delve into the use case framework, you can see there are many, and this is barely scratching the surface. But through inspiration, we can augment our creativity. And within the automation realm, we can gain content efficiency and scale. And by optimization, we can get content effectiveness to skyrocket. And this framework helps us get traction today in the present. And we do this all with a key design principle when we look at all of the aspects of our business. This very loosely describes, I suppose, the entire marketing process from idea to production, right? And so we look at what are the high empathy and low empathy tasks that people in our industry perform. And where we see high empathy tasks, this is a massive opportunity to augment these people with artificial intelligence, giving them the tools to do this faster and better. And where we see low empathy tasks, for example, versioning an advert to be shown in different languages across 100 markets, this is an opportunity to automate the task with artificial intelligence. So 
Let's take a look at another video to see what we've built and what we're using ourselves and what our agencies are using and what a number of our clients are using today. Marketing. Video, please. <laughs> Marketing is getting more complex. New platforms are emerging and more data is being generated than ever before. For businesses to keep up, imagination is essential. And so is intelligence. The question is how can imagination and intelligence work together? Introducing WPP Open, an operating system that amplifies human creativity and intelligently connects the end-to-end -end marketing process. And with the power of AI, it's getting smarter every day. Every team across WPP can access Open with innovative ways to generate new ideas, target audiences, and analyze performance, and create the wide array of assets brands need, all seamlessly integrated into the marketing process shared between WPP and our clients. And with AI, WPP Open isn't just intelligent, it's highly intelligent. Underpinned by our proprietary AI products, WPP Brains, WPP Open offers unprecedented benefits. With intelligent briefing assistance, synthetic audience testing, and live in-flight dashboards at your fingertips, you get more tools to support decision-making. Enabling WPP to collaborate with clients creatively, whilst delivering audience building, media planning, execution, and the delivery of content at scale, all augmented by AI. WPP Open empowers teams to deliver better work faster for the world's leading brands. Creative transformation through imagination and intelligence. WPP Open, the AI-enabled operating system for marketing. And so we call this human creativity augmented. And this combination of tools and technology paves the way for augmented human creativity a new world where the prompt is the new art direction, where creative, production, media, and data are all integrated parts of an idea. You'll notice some work coming out of India right there. But I'm gonna show you one of my favorite pieces of work relying on AI um, currently out there in the market. Video, please. <laughs> Sorry if you so come celebrate your anniversary, your birthday, or just generally being fabulous. Really, Kyle? It's good, right? Gen AI is supposed to be inviting people to Virgin Voyages, not doing whatever that was. You know, just give me that. As I was saying, why not celebrate on an award-winning voyage with Michelin-starred chef-curated menus, world-class destinations, award-winning... Boring! I'll hop in there. I'll hop right in that suit. I can't watch this. Give it to me. There's no kids here. That's all you need to know. No kids! <laughs> oh, can I live there? Gen AI. Invite your crew to voyage. Create your custom invite at virginvoyages.com. It's not just a yacht. It's a super yacht. Cool. So that campaign was launched in the US. It was highly successful. and users um, could scan the QR code and create a video that they sent to their friends and Jennifer Lopez would say their name as well as their friend's name, inviting them on a voyage and to enter a competition. And so if we look at scaling content and AI personalization use cases on a continuum of sophistication, with WPP Open, brands like Nestle are using a variety of tools underpinned by integrated large language models, multiple large language models, as well as their own brand information to generate creative ideas that are brand compliant. Uh, things like social media posts uh, and digital ads in the realm of ideation and content editing. In terms of scaled adaptation, um, one of our teams is creating a project to help the visually impaired understand what is being shown on TV or in video ads by creating audio narration that overlaps on the video only in the gaps where people need to see something and the audio does not indicate what that might be. And our AI content engine is being used by Coca-Cola to enable the creation of 
thousands of product-grade Coke and meals content uh, that can be generated by their own marketing teams on a self-service basis. And this brings together USD 3D models with generative AI backgrounds and environments that pave the way for 3D-driven generative AI. And that's an example of a new business model from us. And finally, if we look at what it means to have a fully integrated content supply chain. WPP is building the next generation of car configurators for automotive giant BYD's Denzel luxury brand, powered by Omniverse Cloud and Generative AI. OpenUSD and Omniverse Cloud allows Denza to connect high-fidelity data from industry-leading CAD tools to create a physically accurate, real-time digital twin of its N7. WPP artists can work seamlessly on this model in the same Omniverse Cloud environment with their preferred tools from Autodesk, Adobe, and SideFX to deliver the next era of automotive digitalization and immersive experiences. Today's configurators require hundreds of thousands of images to be pre-rendered to represent all possible options and variants. OpenUSD makes it possible for WPP to create a super digital twin of the car that includes all possible variants in one single asset, deployed as a fully interactive 3D configurator on Omniverse Cloud GDN, a network that can stream high-fidelity, real-time 3D experiences to devices in over 100 regions, or used to generate thousands of individual pieces of content that comprise a global marketing campaign. The USD model is placed in a 3D environment that can either be scanned from the real world using LiDAR and virtual production or created in seconds with generative AI tools from organizations such as Adobe and Shutterstock. This innovative WPP solution for BYD brings generative AI and cloud-rendered real-time 3D together for the first time, powering the next generation of e-commerce. And so this work is, is, is um, for those who don't know, production is one of the largest em emitters of carbon um, in our industry. And what this work allows us to do is to have virtual production that virtually eliminates the, those carbon emissions. And it's a sustainably made solution that is available in India via Hogarth, one of our agencies. And so we're seeing this radical evolution of marketing and the world right now. Um, it's filled with lifelike assistance. Just yesterday, my partner and I used ChatGPTO to communicate in Hindi with a tuk-tuk driver uh, so that we could get to where we wanted to go and come back. Um, we are seeing the emergence of small, long, small language models designed to perform well for simpler tasks and be more accessible for organizations who have limited resources. And generative AI modalities are broadening from text, images, and video to from text and images to include video. This is OpenAI's Sora text to video and Google's VO. And the work that we're doing with NVIDIA is taking text into full 3D. Just look at those lilies and violets and the perspective that you get from 3D generated with text. And finally, the future of creativity demands diversity. This is our creative technology apprenticeship in the UK, something we've achieved with the support of our amazing partners and clients like L'Oreal, Two cohorts have gone through this program already, and many of the students are now working in agencies like Hogarth and Ogilvy and Group M. Lastly, I want to talk about India. WPP is working very, very closely with our teams in this region, providing access to our strategic partners, the latest technology, the best tools to power the best capabilities on the planet. So I hope that we can launch similar programs like our apprentice program in India. And so if there are any people in the audience who wish to support that, come and chat to me afterwards. I want to acknowledge our local team. We have over 150 creative technology and innovation people. We've built an out of this world center of excellence experience center in Delhi. And this market is geared for the advancements that I've shown today. India has over 200 million 5G users. There is no other market in the world that I've seen that is as ripe for artificial intelligence and augmented reality today. And in comparison to other markets, I see India being best placed for innovation thanks to your curious, can-do culture and integrity. In fact, most of the work coming from this region 
I use as examples when I go and present in the UK and in the US and other regions. From my global perception, India has achieved way more in this realm than most first world regions. But if I can offer one piece of advice, and that is to continue to test and learn. Test and learn, test and learn, test and learn. Thank you very much.